New Witch of the Woods backpack and spiral notebook in the shop. Click the link below to get them before they're gone. I have to have you. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodalallies, Rebecca Parham here. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, Becca, why do you have that handkerchief bag on a pole, commonly referred to as a bendel that was popularized in the 1930s as a way to visually represent the impoverished migrant workers of the Great Depression? Are you running away? Now, what would give you an idea like that? I'm just out for a picnic. However, if you care to join me, I'll tell you a story about running away. I believe every single one of us as children went through phases. Some of us had a dinosaur phase, a pony phase, a space phase, any period of time where you got particularly fixated on a subject or idea. Come to think of it, I don't think we ever stopped going through phases. Now, I know you're not going to believe this, but as a kid, I was kind of weird. Breaking news! An adult artist was weird as a kid! This and a new research study showing that YouTubers are not as energetic in real life as they are in their videos! More at 8! Alright, alright, yes, it's no surprise to anyone that I was a weird kid. And one of the really bizarre phases I went through around the third grade was this idea of running away from home. To play this game, I would tie up some things into my baby blanket, hang it from a stick over my shoulder, and pretend I was leaving home. Mostly by going into a different room. In fact, at one point, I began to lock myself in the bathroom and pretend it was my tiny little house in the woods. Heh, <laughs> running away to a house in the woods. The things children come up with. Honestly, though, as a kid, I never once thought of actually doing it. I was weird, not stupid. Apart from having no life experience to take care of myself, adults were generally in cahoots with each other. The grand majority of them had this belief that kids shouldn't be walking around outside by themselves or some such tyrannical nonsense. I knew I'd never get out of the neighborhood without a concerned adult picking me up and returning me to a very angry set of parents, so no, I had no intention of running away. But mom and dad didn't know that. I don't know what got into me, but one day I wanted to play a practical joke on my mom, and I enlisted the help of my sister to do it. Around this age, Rachel and I were no longer going off to the local daycare after school. We were old enough to walk home. That's right, I eventually achieved my dreams and thereby became a latchkey kid. Rachel and I would walk home from school, use our own key to get in, and then we'd have the place to ourselves for about an hour or two before mom got home. Just enough time for tomfoolery. One unsuspecting day after school, I was bored. And thus came the aforementioned harmless prank. I was still in my running away phase, so I wrote a note for mom to find when she got home. The note basically said, Dear mom and dad, I ran away from home, but I'll be fine. Don't put up signs trying to find me. I'll build my own house and get a job. Blah, 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 yada, yada. Uh, love you and goodbye. All right, come to think of it, in retrospect, this might not have been the most harmless of pranks to play on a parent. But listen, I pitched the idea to Rachel and she was all in. Oldest child is supposed to know better, just saying. Really shirking your responsibilities as a big sister there, Rach. I put the note on mom's pillow, and when we heard the garage door opening, I made myself scarce. Apparently, Rachel hid too, I guess for good measure. And when mom walked into the house, she went into her bedroom looking for us and noticed the note. Mom, did you read the letter? Yes. Weren't you gonna go out and look for her? Oh, well, I figured she'd come back when she got hungry. Oh, the care and concern I felt from my loving mother in that moment. Obviously, Rachel and I were disappointed. But then Mom got an idea. An awful idea. Mama got a wonderful idea. Awful idea. Let's get your dad. You know, parents may not always be cool, but sometimes they're pretty cool. Our prank had been given life once more. And when dad came home, mom met him at the door and put on her best acting chops. Oh my gosh, I found this letter on my pillow. I think Becca ran away. What? Yes, look. What did you do? Did, did you say something to her? No, he actually did that. He blamed my mom immediately. <laughs> no, I did not. Rachel, have you seen your sister? 
No, she walked home ahead of me. I haven't seen her. And the Academy Award goes to these two because Dad bought it hook, line, and sinker. Dad naturally was very upset and flustered. I mean, the man thinks that his daughter is wandering the streets alone and cold and hungry and probably being eaten by coyotes or squirrels or something, I don't know. So he declares, We must go forth and return the second born to her rightful place, in these the hallowed halls of Castle Perham. Okay, I wasn't in the room at the time, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. In his mind. Either way, he told my mom and sister to get ready for the search. But before the harrowing journey could commence, he had to make a pit stop at the bathroom. Now up until this point, Mom and Rachel had done their parts perfectly, but leave it to me to mess up the joke. The joke that was my idea. For you see, there was a wealth of hiding places in that house. Any number of spots would have sufficed. But I chose possibly the worst place apart from just standing out in the open with a lampshade on my head. I picked my mom and dad's shower that had a frosted but still very transparent glass door. So when dad walked into the bathroom... Listen, all I'm saying is that I already paid for the order. It's not my problem how you get 426 pumpkins out here. I'll call you back. <clears throat> Dad found me in the shower and was rightfully upset. Probably very relieved, but very upset. Mom and Rachel soon came in laughing hysterically, further rubbing salt in Dad's wound. You all are a bunch of jerks. And as if this whole video couldn't get any juicier, look what my mother found. This is the actual note from this story. She kept it all of those years. You could carbon date this thing and get 25 years of gunk off of it. And if you'll make note, fellow scholars, you shall see that the handwriting has scarcely changed. Also, I just love the fact that at the bottom here I wrote I love you four times just to make sure that my parents knew this was not personal. Those of you feeling sorry for my dad, don't worry. They say there's only five love languages, but my family has a sixth one. Messing with each other. Dad got his revenge hundreds of times over the years. And trust me when I say, I loved every moment of it. And who would want to run away from that? Thanks for joining me for a Picnic Explainers, and thank you so much for tuning in, but now, 